In tonight's episode, Detective Adipose and Detective Clarapose return to solve murder for your enjoyment. And this is a brand new mystery as well. This is a murder staged. So if you've never watched our adventures before, this will be an excellent place for you to start. This is a specially extended episode, so please join us for Leighton Brothers Mystery Room, Part 9. Well, greetings, and welcome back to Leighton Brothers Mystery Room. I'm here with the lovely Clary Pose. Hello. And uh, we're starting a brand new uh, mission uh, today, or a, bra a brand new, uh, I'm not sure what the word is, a case. We're starting a brand new case. This is the first the one we have actually paid for. So, uh, so Clary, this has actually cost us our own money. How do, you, how, how do you feel about that? I don't know. How much money did it cost you? Tell me and I'll tell you how I feel about it. It cost us £1.99. But you know what? I feel pretty good about that. Okay. Well then, in that case, I, I won't bother going to the shop to show that we've done it. We'll just get um, right on into it. So this is a brand new case. Um, Although there, there does seem to be kind of an overarching plot involving kind of Leighton and his plucky assistant. Mm. Um, but which Leighton? <laughs> which of the many Leightons is going gonna, is gonna to be there? So here we go. These are the new cases that we have got. Um, a murder staged, a walking corpse, the DJ swan song, and the kiss goodbye. Well, that sounds awfully sad. But um, we'll, obviously we need to play in order. So we're going to have a character here called Justin Lawson. Um... I think last time I did the female characters, so I think it might be your turn to pick on the female characters okay, this time I'll after my uh, uh, little issues last time. So here well, we go. I think in terms of difficulty, this is the first case that we've had which is two stars. Oh, I think it might be more challenging than were they stabbed with the glass that's lying on top of them. Maybe. Although we did do so well with that last time, so we'll see how we get on. This guy kind of looks American. He's got like big kind of like Uncle Sam type pants. That's and... true. Do you want to do this one, or shall I? No, no, this one is all yours. Okay, uh, let's go like proper Texan with them then and go, Hey, are you here, Al? Is that Amer American to me. Oh, yeehaw, that kind of thing. Hey, you here, Al? You here, Al? Did... Are we expecting you? Oh, uh, sorry, I must be in the wrong room. Ah, uh, Lawson, uh, what are you doing here? Ah, oh, there you are, Al. Uh, so who's this young lady then, huh? I'm Lucy Baker. I'm the prof's new research assistant. Hang on, that's not the full title. I'm Lucy Baker, the awesome research no, assistant. Plucky. I'm not going. I'm not using the word plucky. I'm not plucky. We agreed that you were plucky, and no, I was mysterious. You stated I was plucky, and I said no. That's not the same as agreeing. No, you said you weren't going to make me tea. <laughs> that is also true. Uh, you two haven't met before, have you? Um, this is Justin Lawson. He's a detective with the Serious Crime Squad. Serious uh, what? What? <laughs> serious what? Serious Crime Squad. Oh, okay. What did I say? Quine. He said Quine. Quine. Serious Crime Squad. We should so do something where like we like can't say a certain consonant. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of stupid games, while we're playing um, during the uh, playthroughs, and we of course will be continuing our um, word of the day. We've uh, gone through all of your posts from last time and we've written down one, two, three, four, five, five words of the day that we're going to try and sneak in somewhere. We won't necessarily recap at the end, so you'll just have to listen out. See uh, if you can spot them. And just while Addy is pausing for a moment, because he is very rarely poor siloquent, uh -huh. we have a special message for one of our listeners. We do. Happy birthday to Chloe. I understand it was your birthday a couple of days ago, so I hope that you had a very lovely birthday and a very lovely birthday week. Can I also point out that, that, that Clary Pose had a massive go at me for not saying happy birthday the other day. Apparently I don't pick up on non-verbal signals. Non-verbal signals such as, it was my birthday. It is my birthday. <laughs> Silence, Raddy. So, happy birthday, Chloe. <laughs> Look, Sassy this is why like this is that. why we have men and women in the world. The women pick up on these like signs, such as you know, it's my birthday, happy birthday, and men do things like gardening. <laughs> have you seen our garden? Well, not necessarily that I do gardening, but you know, the, the males as a whole. Right. Well, okay, I take you know. Because any time you want to do the gardening, there's some three foot high weeds back there. I did the weeds. You did. They're back again. Well, do you think people want to listen to this? Um, I don't know. If you uh, if you think that I should do the gardening, let us know in the comments section. <laughs> On with the game, please. Right, okay. 
Oh, uh, sorry, but the, uh, the introductions will just have to wait there. Um, have you heard about the actress in the on-stage murder case? Aye, I have. I saw it on the Jeremy Summer Show. That better not be like the Jeremy Carl Show. No. Jeremy, Jeremy Springer? What? Who's Jeremy? Jeremy Kyle. Oh, yeah, of course. Jeremy. 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 Anyway. Some loopy fan that announced they were going to kill the lass on stage. Ah, well, that's the press's take on it, is it? Oh, they've got it wrong. Yeah, it's much more straightforward than that. A stagehand was found in the wings, holding the gun. So, you have your man then? Uh, unfortunately not. Someone punched the young bloke and knocked him out cold, you see. What, the murderer got a thumping? I love the way they put certain words in bright red. Mm, but it's not necessarily yeah. what seems to be the most important <laughs> words. It's just... What? The murderer got a thumping? <laughs> Let's see what else we get. Interesting! So I just whistled slightly. There was a little musical note came out of my mouth. <laughs> Interesting! <laughs> we, should, we should start putting these punctuations Let's sing in, everything instead. in some sort of audio sound. Uh, hey, well, this sounds like a case for the mystery room. We'll look into it. Oh, I had a feeling I'd want to take it on. I've already sent the file over. Good luck with it, boy. I'll see you later. Well, he's gone. We can talk about him now. Excellent. What, what, what do you want to say about him? Not a lot. Okay. Oh, this must be the highest... Oh, you're doing your dialogue! Your dialogue! Oh, sorry. The incident took place in a famous West End theatre. A popular actress was... Oh, is this... How yes, am I supposed to be yes, Lucy? Yes, it's act, uh, acting. Uh, sorry. Did you just shout at me? Yes, I did. You didn't act. <laughs> Quick! There were three suspects, one of whom were a famous actor. It was the hottest gossip in town and the Jeremy Summer Show covered it every day. But the truth behind the case was a real shocker. No one could have guessed who the real culprit were. No one. Do you know who I think it is? I think it's Leighton. Who? Leighton? I, I think so. It's deep and dark side. No, it wasn't. Yes, it was. No, it wasn't. It was. Ow. Well, let's go over the case. Let's go over everything we know so far. First of all, Clary Pose punched me and I'm not really sure why. Because she shouted at me. Why did the music just stop? Oh, well. Let's go over the case. The incident took place during a play in which the high-profile actor and actress was starring. The victim was Gloria Blase, the actress playing the part of the heroine. Would you please introduce us, Claire Pose? What do you want me to do? Introduce us. To Gloria... I think it might be Gloria Blaze rather than Blase. It's not Blaze. Well, surely it would have a Z. No. Okay. The victim is a famous actress, an actress of illustrious theatrical heritage who underwent stage training from a very early age and was greatly admired. Engaged to famous actor Roscoe Strappy. Could I just point out before we go any further that American guy that was there before um, abs qualitated away. What did he do? He abs qualitated away. He did very quickly. He did. <clears throat> <clears throat> Anyway, her co-star was the popular performing Roscoe Strapping. Oh, that was the guy that was on the TV program from the previous oh, yeah. um, thing. So you know, right, it's, it's it something we've got our own little world within yeah. the case here. Right? Do you want to... Roscoe Strapping, 38 male, victim's fiancé and star of the show. A preeminent star of the stage of, film, of television and of film who enjoys overwhelming popularity. He's got amazing hair. Awesome hair. And a really, really high shirt. That's good. That's he's good. wearing a bow tie, which means he's all right with me. It turns out that the pair were also engaged to be married in real life. Ah, oh, that's nice. Doctor Who likes bow ties. He does. Bow ties are cool. Bow ties are cool. Bow ties are cool. Stetsons are cool. At the performance climax the other day, the hero, played by Strapping, shoots his unfaithful wife, played by Blase. Blaze. That is brobding, naggy and hair he's got, isn't it? It is very dramatic hair. But she's got pretty epic hair as well. That's all the way down to her knees. As the shot goes off, Blaze for Blase. I, I, I prefer Blase. Okay, I'm going to call her Blase. Blase for. Make, make, it's a bit like, you know, like the Blase residence, <laughs> the lady of the house speaking, I think. Um, Blase falls to the floor in a pool of blood. All of this was exactly as scripted. Despairing of his actions, the hero leaves the room. And as he exits the stage, Strapping collides with a supporting actress by the name of Destiny Knox. Ha ha! Uh -oh. <laughs> 
Oh, I bet she were having a case of the jitters before her big entrance. Immediately after that, the lights went out. In the pitch black, Blase cries out for help. Help! Help! As it dawns on the audience that this is not part of the play, another shot rings out through the darkness. No. It's very dramatic. Super dramatic. The stage director hurriedly brings the lights back up, but Blase is where she lay, utterly motionless. Knox runs over to her and discovers that she is dead. Wow, Knox might have even better hair. And even better eyes. Those eyes are redder than your eyes, darling. My eyes are red. Uh, are you uh, Lucy Plucky Assistant Your Plucky eyes. Assistant eyes red. She's also got hair, which is a little bit Princess Leia. It's pretty cool, actually, her hair. But where would that hair come from? Her head? Where does hair normally come from? No, 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 but you see the hair that's in little buns on the side? Oh, yeah. Where's that come from? Because the rest of her hair is still there. <laughs> True. That's an impossible haircut, unless she like grows extra hair out of those Unlike side bits Layton's of hair. Unlike haircut, which is perfect. My haircut is awesome! I worked on that curl. Do you know how much, like, gel is in that little <laughs> curl of my hair? Anyway, it's your line. Shot in the dark, eh? And now we have to turn our attention to another involved party, a stagehand by the name of Bray Clegg. Bray Clegg, 31 male, a stagehand in the victim show. A prop assistant who had a crush on... Blase. <laughs> <laughs> he personally manufactured all of the props used in the show, from the replica gun to the fake blood. He doesn't look 31, does he? He really doesn't look 31. I'd say more like 12. Yeah, 12. 12. But okay, fine. Maybe he's got fake ID. He was found lying unconscious in the wings, yeah. with the murder weapon in his hand and what appears to be a pin cushion? Yeah. Maybe that's one of those, like, fix your costume theatre things, you know, as they're going to run on, they go, oh no, your dress is slipping and pin it. Oh yeah, Prof, there's now more incriminating than that, surely? Well, being found with the murder weapon actually in your hand, mm. they're probably not. It's far from conclusive proof that he's the killer, so that information is being kept from the press. Right. Anyway, Clegg claims he was hit by someone whilst the lights were out. Sounds fishy to me. Well, what with the murder and all, it's not exactly pleasant, is it? Well, perhaps, but he definitely lost consciousness for a while. That is beyond dispute. Hmm. Oh, did you see your grumpy scribble? Yeah, and I went, hmm. You did. So, let's consider who the culprit could be. We can start with the stagehand, Break Leg. Yes, we can. He was found lying unconscious in the wings with the gun that was used in the shooting. Everything's red here. Everything was everything vitally important. Red. With the gun that was used in the shooting in his hand. And everything's already been said before. Well, if he's found lying unconscious, that would have to mean for a conclusion that even if he was the killer, uh -huh. there's someone else that's involved in this some way because something must have hit him or something. Unless he took unconscious pills. What's an un What, just quickly OD'd on painkillers? Mm hmm. Sleeping pills. I suppose so, or, or smashed himself in the face or something. But either way, I don't. I think don't think he'd work alone. Or perhaps it? he had that condition. You know that condition where people keep falling asleep. Narcolepsy. Wow, very good. Yeah, that wasn't even a word of the day. No, that wasn't. That wasn't even a word of the day. Yeah. <laughs> Extra points. Uh, thank you. Uh, well, it's because I'm not a little country yokel, you see. Huh? Uh, anyway, uh, right. He cla However, he claimed someone knocked him unconscious and planted the weapon on him. Going off the evidence we have, he's got to be our number one suspect, eh? Oh, poor plucky assistant. Our next suspect is the play's leading actor, Roscoe, Roscoe Strapping. Strapping. And we've already seen what yeah. he's all about. Uh, he exited the stage just before the theatre was plunged into darkness. He claims to have been alone in his dressing room when he heard the shot. Oh, that was another scribble. That was a bit of a scribble. Hmm, I wonder. It would be quite... You'd have to have got to his dressing room really fast to be there by the time... You know, if, if the sequence of events happened just as he said. Um, and I wonder if there'd be something we can kind of challenge him on to say if he was there when he heard the shot later on, looking thinking about what happened in the last one. And finally, we have the uh, supporting actress, uh, Miss Destiny Knox. In fact, we haven't actually described her before, so would you do the honours? 
Suspect 27 female, a new actress in the victim show. They generally regard us as a good at as ah uh, so generally <laughs> regarded as a good looking and competent up and coming talent. There are rumours that she'll stop at nothing to get a part. There uh, well there's your motive right there. I love the way she's matched her hair to her bow. She has matched her hair to her bow. I did the same thing. Yeah. Uh, she was on stage with the victim when the lights went out. She was also the closest person to the victim when the lights came on again. The one who discovered the body. Apart from the hundreds of people in the audience, yes. Who heard the gunshot. Uh, so those are our three suspects. Based on that information, Lucy, who do you think did it? What's your hunch? After you've told me that, we'll start with the actual detective work. It's curtains who, for whoever did this, Prof. You mark my words. Who's the criminal? Just go with your gut feeling to start with. Well, last time we got this initial one wrong. Mm. I don't... I, I don't... What's your initial... What are you thinking? I mean, the obvious one is the guy that had the gun in his hand, but then you kind of think, is that too obvious? Yeah. But then again, you might turn around, if we say someone else, you might turn around and be like, mm, this guy's got the actual gun in his hand. Yeah, that's true. But the other thing is, if the, about the, that's against this Destiny Knox girl, is if she's actually on stage, how would she knock out someone who's off stage? Mm. With the guy, assuming that the fact that assuming that the whole idea that he was unconscious is actually a fact, as opposed to a um, uh, like he just laid on the floor and went uh, or something like that, which then leads us back to Roscoe strapping. But then why would he kill his? There's no, we've got no evidence so far to say why he would murder his um, person. Should we ask for some advice? See if we get some extra clues. Okay, good thinking. Or, or have a think about it. Let's ask for some advice. See what he says. Well, this is an extremely complicated case. I would start by considering Bray, the young man found unconscious holding the gun. I said that! Was he struck by the real killer? You said that. I did say that. Or is he lying? Mm. So maybe he isn't unconscious, because if he isn't unconscious, it could just be that he's him. Personally, I find the goings-on backstage to be more than a little suspicious. That wasn't advice. Well, he's identified the things that we identified. Well, we'll end up investigating the crime scene later. This is so, true. so let's not repeat. Even if we get this right, he, they would still make us go and investigate. I wonder if we get scene. another clue if we think about it. Let's just uh, uh, if this just does nothing, let's just let's see what it does there. Very well. Let me tell you what I think. What? Apparently that's what happens if you think about it. I think strapping is our man. What? Have we accidentally just bypassed that question? I don't know. Yes, let's see. I'm, uh, oh, 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 laser eyes. 92.9% positive. Hmm, that's not that high. It's, it's reasonably high. There's a 7.1% chance he's wrong. I will That's what he said. Well, is. we best call the man in and have him put paid to your doubts about the other 7.1% then. Exactly what I was hoping to do. Exactly. But I'm alas, alas, I'm not sure that he'll come. Let's take a moment to consider what we already know about strapping. I know something. If this is some TV program that you've been watching with him in, I don't really want to know. I know something. What do you know? I don't know, you haven't pressed the go button. Roscoe Strapping stood of the stage. Stood? Stood of the stood. stage. He's gone on Newcastle. Stood. stood. Engaged to be married, but engaged in you know what. With another lass at the same no, time. No. No way. way. Not Roscoe Strapping. No way. It's like Anthony and Cleopatra, Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton all over again. All over again. That's right. See, I'm showing my knowledge of famous Hollywood affairs. From mm -hmm. 30 years ago. Mm-hmm. At least that's what they said on Jeremy's Summer Show. And as we all know, if it's on the Jeremy Summer Show... It is gospel truth. Gospel truth. In fact, most of the gospel originally came from the Jeremy Summer Show. So our suspect is something of a cad. Update. 
preeminent star of the stage. However, his debauchery, oh, we should have put that in words oh, of the day. Uh, he's well known, and while engaged to the uh, uh, victim, he was carrying on an affair. Ooh, an affair with actress Destiny Knox. Ooh, the plot thickened. The plot has just thickened with no tippy nope at all. That was rubbish. What was? Getting t- titty nope in t- there. I'm pretty sure we could have got it in better later on. What was wrong with my titty nope? It didn't make any sense. There was no... I, let's just go out of character for a second. Sorry, a word of the day was titty nope, and I've just tried to subtly just throw it in there, and Clara Pose is kicking off and objecting to this. Uh, um, titty nope is a small quantity of something left over. What was your sentence? The, it, the, the plot has thickened with no titty nope. With, with no quantity of anything left over at all. What? <laughs> Look. <laughs> Look. Yeah. I Look, don't worry, you can edit this out later. No. Well, I could do, but I'm not going to. <laughs> fine, fine. You, well, you get the last one in. Are we down to the last one? No, I think we've done them all now. Oh. I think we've done them all now. I did that one already. When did you do that one? I described his hair as Brobdenagian. <laughs> Do you think words of the day has maybe taken over the show more than we anticipated? <laughs> <laughs> but maybe we should just rename the video Words, words of, the of the Day with day. Professor Layton. <laughs> anyway, right. The worst kind of man and the enemy of all women. Oh, you got a bit of a feminist streak there, mm-hmm. little pad one. But that's not what we should be focusing on here. There's something else that interests me. Oh, I? What's that? Well, he's an actor, and actors are masters of deception. They make fantasy appear. It's reality. Strapping. God, good God, Roscoe Strapping's one of the best. Could be a tough nut to crack then, eh, Prof? Oh, Ding the dong. doorbell. Fetch the, do- fetch the door, please. Hey, up. We've got company. Who are you? It's, it's, it's Roscoe Strapping. Is this me? Would you like to be Roscoe Strapping? I'd quite like to give it a go. Okay, so, now, so we've got a kind of posh actor type chappy. Posh actor nationality. Well, he looks kind of French, Eastern European, or Spanish, maybe, you know. Hey, I thought that that To excuse the unannounced entrance. Cool. Ooh, Roscoe Strapping. Well, well, what a bell. An unexpected pleasure, I must say. Are you a fan, Precious? You wish. Oh, look at that feisty little... I reckon she likes him. I reckon she likes him too. She, she, the woman doth protest too much, She's methinks. She's got a bit of colour in her cheeks. And her eyes. <laughs> I'm a research assistant here in the mystery room. Do you see Baker to you? Well, she pushes out her chest and blinks. She does. <laughs> <laughs> this is the mystery room. The very place I have been looking for. Ah, well, yes, this is fine, right, right. Uh, You must be Roscoe Strapping, I can tell from the hair. The one and the only. My fame and my talent, they proceed me, I see, good. I don't really have any bloody cue who you are, to be honest, but anyway. And you are? Uh, I work here in the mystery room with Detective Constable Strapping Assistant Baker. Um, Inspector Layton is my name. If you would like some tea, just speak to her. Did you just describe me as strapping? Did I describe you as strapping? You just described me as strapping. <laughs> like no wonder I push my chest out and blinking. <laughs> just, might, show me off in front of the guests. And might I ask uh, why, why you're here? I heard there was a team attempting to unravel the gruesome truth about my dear glorious Chillingham. Well, maybe the main problem is the fact that you shot her in the face. Yeah? Yeah, do you ever think about that? So, I came to solve the mystery. Oh, well, thank God he's here to solve thank the mystery, Blucky Assistant. Yes. What would we do if he hadn't come here to solve the mystery for us? Thank God you're here, Mr. Strapping. Huh? Well, please enlighten us. So, without further ado, I present to you the truth. That was very very nice. Who did it, then? The identity of the black-hearted miscreant responsible for my late wife-to-be's demise. It was da da da. Oh, we've got a list of da 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 on our suspects. Suspect four. Da da da. Da 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 da. Mr. Da da da. We'd like to speak to you about the murder. Oh. 
بري كوليج ذا ستيج هاند شو اللي عرفت بي ذي؟ الستيج هاند بري كوليج ذا ستيج هاند ستيج هاند اي لايك ذا اتس جود Well, you're quite the detective, aren't you, Mr. Strapping? It's a case. No, it's an. It's what? It's an elementary case of deduction, my dear. Firstly, he was crushed by unrequited love. And secondly, the prize simpleton was found holding the murder weapon. This does. We had. We had pointed out. We had considered this, hadn't we? That this is a an important clue. Simply following these two lines of investigation leads you directly to the unequivocal truth. And what? Unequivocal truth. And what? Unequivocal truth. And that, my dear, Gloria shuffled off this mortal coil when Bray Click put a bullet through her chest. He is quite an actor, isn't he? I think Mr. Roscoe Strapping should play Words of the Day. He's put more in than we have in the last eight shows. It's true. It's true. Hmm. Well, I see you're fairly fixed on your line of inquiry. As I just scratch my beard thoughtfully. You scratch your four beard. My my four beard hairs. Well, what's all I've been able to grow is these four little hairs here. Oh, sorry. Aren't you going to set this up start straight, Prof? On the contrary, I think Mr. Strapping has some very compelling theories. Very compelling. And don't forget, after all. He's in movies. <laughs> He's famous. He's a celebrity, <laughs> and he hasn't yet signed my shirt. So, let the investigation begin. No, I normally say that. That's my line. That's the yeah, but I'm saying stolen now. my line. He stole the prof's line. Have you played this before? No, but he stole my line. I saw that he stole my. I saw. I saw the wrong voice. I saw, I saw that he stole my line. It actually this happened. Game before. No, I've played this before. He stole my line. Right. Okay. Well, we can look at the wound. We can look at the gun. We can look at the suspect. And as we go in order, as as per usual. Investigating the wound means checking out the body, right? You're learning fast, my little plucky assistant. The wound is normally found in the body of the victim. Would you like a strong man to escort you? He's flirting with you. I'll be just fine, thank you very much. Ten pounds, you go on a date with him by the end of the day. Start. Are we okay to start investigating? Oh, magic little sound in my ear there. What are you? And the mystery room machine reconstructs. The evidence. Well, maybe we can maybe we can actually speed this up then. By we skip that initial stage. So maybe actually by doing that, we can actually not have to check everything twice. Well, here is the poor murder of the poor victim. Stage position A. This is a mark indicating Blase's place on stage for the scene in which she gets shot. And here's the corpse. Blase's dead body. She was killed with a single bullet through the chest. Forensics confirmed she was shot from a distance of one to three meters away. Oh, that's not very far. I mean, that's th that would have to be on stage, or at the very least, you know, just off it. Hmm. Well, a single shot to the heart from between one and three meters away, resulting in instant death. Exactly. From the barrel of the very revolver found in Clegg's guilty hand. Clegg did it. I'll see that dastard rot in hell. Dastard. Dastard. What's a dastard? Um, is it when someone who's dyslexic a has a child <laughs> outside of wedlock? Kid, the yeah, dys dyslexic children. Uh, he'll go to hell for this. Well, please, please try and remain calm. Let Let's continue with our investigation, uh, shall we? Of course. Do excuse me. Got a little bit whoa over emotional there. Oh, I've got a theory. What's your theory? If the stagehand was in love with the victim, maybe it wasn't unrequited. Maybe they were having an affair. He couldn't take it, and because of that, he shot her to kill her and framed him to kind of, you know, get revenge on both. Oh, that go. is a theory. Let's see if we're right, shall we? 
Well, I, I, I think we should discuss it. Do you like it? Do you think that's the truth? I think it could potentially be the truth. You're sitting on the fence. You could, uh, you're balancing on the fence like a ballerina. The victim passed straight through. No, 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 no. The bullet passed straight through the victim's body, so we should be able to find it somewhere on the scene. Seek out the slug. I hear you, Prof. We're looking for a bullet hole now. Wham wham. Well, I suppose if we find the bullet hole, that would give us a straight line through the body back to the killer. Oh. There's a bloody note. Let's see what it says. A typed slip of paper that reads, You'll pay for betraying me. It's not a prop from the show and has a hole in it where the bullet went through. Do you think someone stuck that on the end of the gun and like <laughs> fired it forward? And the blood stain. A grim mix of Blase's real blood and stage blood. The bright red is the fake blood, while the real blood has now darkened. That is indeed gruesome. A little bit icky. Okay, so where could the bullet hole be? What do we think? I thought the bullet hole was under the note. No, 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 no. They said the bullet went the the, the the bullet went through the note. Yeah. But then the bullet hole must have gone somewhere else. So if well, if it came from him over here then that would mean that the bullet hole would have to be all the way over the other side, wouldn't it? Like over here, but there's nothing to search over here, so this is going to be one of the... Unless it's in this chair, perhaps. So let's have a look in this area here. Stage position B. A mark indicating Strapping's place on stage for the scene in which he shoots Blase. Small table and chair that makes up part of the set. They're brand new. They look great. The set door. A door in the set used for the show. This is the exit Strapping would have used to leave the stage after his final scene. Well, the bullet hole doesn't seem to be here. Hang on, we've got stage position C. A mark indicating Knox's place on stage for the scene in which Strapping suits Blase. So, the bullet hole's not over this side. Now, my my theory would be that if it was shot from from over here, oops, then maybe the bullet hole's going to be in the... It's either going to be in the sofa or the wall, isn't it? Depending on the angle that it came through. Just drawing a straight line. So let's have a... Let's check the wall, first of all. We've got a ladder. We've got oil... St oil stains? A large patch along the back of the set covered in lubricating oil. It looks to have been made by a hand rubbing along the wall, but no fingerprints are present. It's weird. A ladder that links the two levels of the set. From the upper level, one can gain access to the lighting bridge. I wonder if that's important, like someone was shot from above, perhaps. In that case, I reckon the bullet must be in the sofa. A sofa used as a prop on stage at a distance, it appears to be a very luxurious piece of furniture, but in truth it is stained and suffering the effects of old age. Come on, bullet hole, bullet hole, bullet hole. Oh, oh look what I can see! Oh, that's not a piece of fruit. It's the bullet hole. You found it. There we go. Having passed through Blaze's chest, the bullet that killed her pierced a hanging picture to finally lodge itself in the set wall. This is it, Prof. Okay, so from the relative positions of the hole and the corpse, we can deduce where the shot originated. Dead body here, bullet hole here, shooter, shooter here. Ah. I'll figure it out in a jiffy. Not so far. Stop! We know it was a gun. We already know that Gloria's life was taken by a bullet. Le bullet. Le bullet. That's ticket, isn't it? Le bullet. <laughs> yes, what's up? Any further to investigation hell. about that is a complete waste of time, surely. Oh, we're, we're just uh, trying to be thorough, right? Won't take a moment. We're establishing all facts and pinpointing the shooter. Well, if you will waste precious minutes while that miscreant roams free, just get on with it quickly!
Okay, well. Do you want to take over this bit? Mm -hmm. Tell me all about it then. Okay, so we've got a billet hole in the wall. So the bullet hole's in the wall oh, over where the picture is. Must have gone through her, so it must have come from... Well, it kind of must have come from over over to the the right of the sofa, but that doesn't seem to be investigated. No, no, because it's gone through her. It can't. So you think... See these crosses on the floor? It would have come from that other yeah, cross. the second cross down. Can't click on that. No, it won't let us go in there, will it? But it's going to be it's something like stage position B, I think. Oh, we can say where it was fired from. I think that's the closest one that we've got, isn't it? Because if we draw a straight line... Uh. Oh, actually, no. Sorry, look. When we go into this one, it that's giving us that other dot. The dot that wasn't quite in the right. circle. So I reckon it was, it was fired from stage position B. Happy with that? Yeah, I'm happy with that. It was fired from here! Well, as far as I can tell, it put the shooter about here. Ha ha ha, that was my position on stage. Sorry, angel face, but you're reading the wrong line. Think again. What's your reasoning, Lucy? What proves this is the location from which the killer took the shot? It's directly under the lights, the body and the bullet hole placing. It's fairly out of sight. Well, I was going for B, was why I chose mm. that spot. Ah! Oh, he's rattled. That's the one that's within the one to three meters distance from the body. Yes, it's indeed likely that the shot originated here. Aye, this is the spot all right. The gun must have been fired from right here. Nowhere else. What an extraordinary coincidence, ladies and gents. One in a million, the very spot I occupied on stage. By bad luck, by chance, by a twist of fate. <laughs> of course, it's of no relevance whatsoever. As I expected, this has all been an utter waste of time. A fool's errand, irrelevant trivia. On the contrary, Mr. Roscoe, this is extremely relevant extremely information. Extremely relevant. It's so relevant, I couldn't be any more relevant if I tried. Not if you tried. Pardon me? Well, when the shot was heard, it was pitch black on stage. Shooting the victim dead with a single bullet in total darkness is bordering on the impossible. Slain by a single slug shot in the dark? Sensational sniping! And that's important, so it's all in red. We should yes. take note of that. Okay. Hmm. Now, I, that could be important because it would mean that it would have to be someone that knew exactly where they would be and from a set position already, which again would be someone on that spot. I him. Bordering on, perhaps, yet alack, my glorious life was taken with one such a miserable slug. A single slug. Whatever you may Ooh, angry, say. Oh, angry, angry, angry. Oh, our angry. Whatever you may say now, nothing can bring my darling back. Oh, fate, you are a cruel mystery, <laughs> mistress indeed. Mr. Vocation as a <laughs> French actress, my dear. Indeed. Glory is gone. Love is lost. No, no, very true. Nothing will bring Miss Blase back to life, but... The final curtain has already fallen. There is nothing more to say. <laughs> Questioning session over. Right, well that uh, probably going to be a good point for us to end our little look at this. Um, at this case. If you have enjoyed investigating with myself and Clary, then do give the video a like. And of course, you're welcome to join in with theories as long as you haven't played ahead. No spoilers, please, but you're welcome to join in discussing it otherwise. Um, if you spotted your word of the day, congratulations. You're welcome to give us some more suggestions in the comment section below, and uh, we will see you soon. Thank you very much for Clary for joining me today. 
Thank you, Addy, for joining me today. Um, and I just want to point out before we go, we're going to try out some new series. Yes, um, we are. What have week. we got in the pipeline, uh, Well, Addy? we've downloaded quite a few, because so many of you guys have said that you've enjoyed me playing games with the Clary especially. Um, <laughs> don't worry about the, the rest of the videos that I make. Uh, but um, uh, we, we thought we'd have a look at some more stuff. We, th we think we're going to go, go at a game called... Jacob Jones something or other which is a puzzle game a little bit like this well, they, um, did you say that one's voiced? it's voiced but there'll be puzzles and stuff for us to solve we'll give it a go but if, if you enjoy me and Clary playing stuff together then uh, do check that out we'll probably put it out as a bit of an experiment um, sometime uh, during the week so do do check that out thank you very much for watching um, take care do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and we'll see you soon bye bye bye